I receive threats all the time. You're watching KB8. Who is next in your audio audit series? You didn't pay child support. Do you slap at a base? A little while ago, I asked my YouTube community and Instagram page to ask questions that you wanted to know, and I said that there was no such thing as a stupid question. If you had to pick a roommate out of Stevie T or Rob Chapman, who would it be? <sighs> I take it back. Would probably have to be Chapman, there's no way he's louder than Stevie T. I really like your content, especially the research stuff. Thank you, that takes a long time to do. Do you make a living from YouTube? Well, Cliff, I'm gonna give it my best go, but the only way I can make that possible is with sponsored videos, which means today's video is sponsored by Vikings War of Clans. Vikings War of Clans blends MMORPG elements with strategy games to provide a real challenge. Level up to fight off invaders and to become an invader yourself. I've been playing the game for about two weeks now and I've already got a pretty nice kingdom. I've got barracks, manors, mead halls, and everything else a good Viking needs. The stronger your town, the better you can battle. And when it comes to battle, I've raised an army 11,000 strong to defend my kingdom and initiate attacks on enemies and it's pretty fun to train up troops, balance forces and send them out to battle. The game has a bunch of news and updates too. You can join the Paladines and Asgard competition to earn points and rewards. August 10th is Viking's 7th anniversary and to celebrate you can face anniversary invaders on the 8th, 11th and 29th of August. There's special in-game bank offers, sales and promotions and on the 19th and 20th of August you can take part in the Battle for the Throne competition. The winner receives resources, the king's equipment and up to a billion gold. During the month of August take part in personal and clan blitz competition. The Reign the Wardener competition starts the 1st of August and every Tuesday and Wednesday of the month of August the speed of learning, research, construction and training is increased by 20% which is great for new players. So if that sounds like fun download Vikings War of Clans by scanning the QR code on screen or by clicking my link in the description and get all these amazing rewards for free. Thank you Vikings War of Clans for sponsoring this video. Do you receive any threatening mails? If so, any buy any guitar gear companies? Uh, I receive threats all the time. They're pretty mundane at this point. I'm still waiting for an actual cease and desist. Everyone threatens it. I'm telling my lawyer to look at your videos. Tell them to like and subscribe too. In fact, there's a video that I haven't fully made yet. And it's a video that normally I wouldn't really make. Uh, there's a lot of videos that I do that I don't fully finish or I don't finish because a lot of the time it's not really a massively interesting video. However, in this case, I was just asking a few questions and I ended up getting threatened four times. So um, they secured themselves a video that will be made. Are you ever going to do a follow-up vid on Rob Chapman? It would only be worth doing if I could actually speak to Rob. I think that would actually be the interesting part. And recently enough, I sent an email requesting an interview or even just a chat. I've never actually spoken to him. I didn't hear back, wasn't expecting to. Six String TV asks, how tall are you? You seem tall. Well, don't let my camera angle fool you. I'm actually uh, four foot one. I see you have a base in the background. How often do you slap at a base? I actually have two bases, but this is the one that's in the background and this is the one that most people's attention is drawn to because the other one is just a P-base copy. This is a made in Germany Warwick fretless four string with a, uh, a Wenge neck as well. That's kind of nice. I don't play bass very often. I'm not a bass player. I don't really slap it very much, but just for you, uh, I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> things people focus on when learning guitar uh, well this is gonna sound weird especially considering my my current surroundings but it's gear if you're trying to learn the instrument forget about the gear in fact I'd recommend playing unplugged that way you're actually just learning the music as opposed to learning the gear gear is important and it's fun but it's not more important or more fun than music what's your preferred mode for soloing beast mode no it's a uh... Mixolydian. Do you still use the Bonamassa watering can? Um... Yeah. Do you have a guitarist you look or even just looked up to? Yes, Paul Gilbert, not only as a phenomenal guitar player, but also he just seems like the coolest guy. Here's a picture of me actually looking up to Paul. Could you do a guitar collection slash room tour video? Yes, I could. 
but I'm not going to. With the amount of guitars here, I'd have to gloss over everything and the video would still be over an hour long. What I'd much rather do is do the Restring Sundays, where I take a guitar and I can spend the entire video dedicated to that guitar talking about the stories behind them. What brought about the idea for Audio Audit? Um, I was a fan of iDubbbz's Content Cop. Uh, rest in peace. And that was what like originally inspired the original ones, but it's kind of evolved from there to like almost journalistic stuff, but I don't like using that word because that implies that I'm not just some randomer with a camera, which I am. Are you still making audits or has it been nice making drama free content? Those videos aren't stopping. They might not be called audits. There's only three videos with the title audio audit in them, I think. Most of them that a lot of people class as audits. I don't know what the definition of it even is, um, but those videos, there's there's loads of that type of video and those videos will continue. They just take a long time to research and make sure that every word I say is absolutely right. No question, but a virtual hug and keep up the good work. Thank, thank you. Here, get in there. How did you get into hard rock? Well, my first memory, and this isn't a joke, is sitting in the back of the car and hearing Aerosmith eat the rich, so I was pretty much raised on it. Who is next in your audio audit series? Now normally I'd say that's for me to know and you to find out, but you seem nice, so uh, I'll let you know. Uh, there will be a third, it's tradition at this point, one a year, uh, a third Stevie T video. This one though will pretty much just be a victory lap because he proved points I made previously. That's really it. Who first inspired you to pick up the guitar and what was the first riff you ever learned? Mr. Schneebly inspired me to pick up the guitar. This was the coolest thing I had ever seen. I was like 10, 9, 10, something like that. First riff I learned was significantly less cool. It was just the first thing that my guitar teacher taught me because it was easy to do. It's um, from a band I don't really like, Nirvana. It's uh, Come As You Are. That's it. So admittedly, a really good choice to teach a beginner. Like that was the first thing ever. I didn't know any chords, I didn't know anything. And to be able to play that made it feel like I could play full songs because the bulk of that song is just that riff. Would you take a Chapman signature guitar if offered? No. In what world would it be offered? Signature guitars are something that you have to stand by. You have to uh, believe in them and uh, I'm not sure I could do that in, in that particular case. You are an amazing player, thank you. Any tips on how to build speed on electric guitar? I know there are a lot of videos, but I would like to hear your opinion. Okay, I like this question. So speed on guitar is really just muscle memory. So let me show you an example of what we're gonna play and then I'm gonna show you how I would learn it. All right, I'm gonna show you what I'm actually playing. This is the Paul Gilbert trademark lick. It's just the... Sped up. Right, I'm gonna show you the patented Judge Judy slash Bob Ross lesson plan. Take the technique or scale that you want to build your speed on, in this case it's our... And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep playing that, but that's really, really boring. People will recommend you do it to a metronome or to a drum machine. It gets old. The amount of times that you're gonna have to do that to build up speed and the muscle memory in your hands to do it quick, it's gonna take a long time and it's gonna be really boring to do. So what I did was I sat down with the guitar and put on something like Judge Judy and that way it's just interesting enough to take your attention away from the guitar, but not too interesting so that you lose total focus on what you're playing. And ultimately, you're still putting the time in playing the guitar and you'll build up your speed. It'll be something like... Oh, he didn't pay child support. And if it's not Judge Judy, you can also substitute it for Bob Ross. You put the time in and you'll build the muscle memory and you'll be able to play faster. Warning though, you can't advert all your attention to what you're watching. Uh, you do actually need to be playing right for this to work or else you're just gonna get the muscle memory on how to play wrong. So you do need to start off slow and build up. Are you a natural cynic? I don't think I used to be, but it's very hard not to be while looking around in the guitar world or the music industry. Um, so in other words, I am 
what you made me. What's your dream guitar? Uh, probably a mix between these two guitars. They look very similar because they're technically the same model, but they're not. This one is, this one is different to, to this one, and um, these are good. What are your main inspirations with Walker? Well, my inspirations differ all the time, but songs have been written while being inspired by Extreme and Wasp and Warrant and then Glenn is more influenced by uh, Guns N' Roses and Kiss and Motley Crue and then you, you mix it all together and then I take some of the heavier influences as well like suicidal tendencies and that sort of stuff and put those into riffs and uh, so it's just a it's just a mix. When are you going to admit you're a YouTuber? I'd never admit that publicly that's just embarrassing. Is that wall EVH inspired? Yes it is it's supposed to spell out you can't see with this angle but it's like a K a D and a H but it's only gonna spell that out if you know to be looking for it that was kind of the point and it's orange because orange is a nice color that's, <laughs> that's it would you be up to meeting Ingve and talking about his management normally that answer would be yes but in Ingve's case his management is his wife so your question is actually would you be up for meeting Ingve and talking about his wife which the answer is no I wouldn't be <laughs> feats with six string TV any chances uh sure um, basically, uh, the people like you. Say hello. Uh, hi, it's good to be back on the channel. I'm gonna have you feature in this video, the, the Q&A video, but also, uh, we should probably actually have you feature in our video as well. We should collab sometime, that's, that's a great idea. Hi, I'm Caelan from Six String TV, and you're watching KDH. <laughs> perfect, that is perfect.